This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, January the 22nd, 2019. Today in 1506, the first outfit of 150 Swiss guards arrives at the Vatican to begin their centuries-long defense of the Pope. Since 1874, Switzerland does not maintain any foreign military service as a function of their constitution, the one exception being the Pontifical Swiss Guard, or the Papaschlichte Schwissgade, if you prefer. The Pontifical Swiss Guard has its origins in the 15th century Italian wars, and it was a real functioning military unit at various moments since then. Nowadays, the Swiss Guard has three distinct duty types. The colorful uniform for ceremonial events, the simple blue pantaloon suit for public duty, such as guarding doors and the gates at the Vatican Wall, and the suit and tie and 40 caliber Sig Sauer, which is a real functioning secret service type bodyguard unit for the Holy Father himself. Make no mistake, the Swiss Guard are highly trained soldiers who can use their comically large halberd on a pike just as effectively as their handguns and assault rifles. It's considered a very high honor to serve in the Pontifical Swiss Guard and membership is fantastically selective. It's limited to men of a specific range of age, height, and weight, of conspicuous Catholic practice, and with necessary language skills to function in German, Italian, and French, as well as some English. Most guards only serve for a term of two years, with some especially excellent guards being offered one or two extra years at most. In the United States today in 1973, one of the great miscarriages of justice and rank politicization of the Supreme Court came down in dual decisions, Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton. The decisions invented a privacy clause in the Constitution, which nullified legitimate laws in states all across the nation and forced the U.S. into the abortion business. Like the parallel decision Overfell v. Hodge on unnatural marriage, Roe v. Wade legislated from the bench and created chaos in that it created law without discussion, regulation, or due process. Since that decision, some 61 million American babies have been murdered, and those mothers who chose to abort them face massive emotional damage. Norma Lee McCorvey Nelson, who was Jane Roe in the Roe vs. Wade, has since become a great pro-life advocate and admitted that she was used by powerful lobbyists. Despite a national majority in the United States opposed to legalize abortion today, the decision from the Supreme Court remains in effect and the will of the people is subverted by the legal activism of the elite. It's a sad day in the United States. Today, way back in 1561, Sir Francis Bacon was born. He was an English philosopher and politician and the Attorney General for England and Wales and the Lord Chancellor for England around the turn of the century, A.D. 1600. Bacon's great contribution is what is called empiricism. Basically, Bacon said that if we isolate observable facts and apply to those facts strict reason and rationality, we should be able to develop better theories and better understandings of the causes of those observations and their side effects. It doesn't seem particularly revolutionary to us now, but Bacon's work is the basis of modern science, which has a lot of good to recommend to us. Unfortunately, some thinkers misapplied Bacon's thought to exclude any possibility of the unobservable or the supernatural. But while they discount and reject God and the angels and the saints, they also logically reject electrons and black holes. It's made for some sloppy science in the last 200 years. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.